Happy Friday, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Bearham Engines. The CVH head. So this is the EFI RS turbo cylinder head. Paul has installed the exhaust guide yesterday, reamed them out, absolutely snug as a bug now. So if we lift those up and try the backwards and forwards, side to side movement, there's barely anything. You want a little bit, because you don't want them gnarling up. You need enough for a bit of oil to get in there, but um, yeah, they're absolutely fine. So are the inlets, they're the same. So what I'm gonna do this morning is we're gonna set this up. And as you can see here, you've got you sort of have got a three-phase cut, you, but you've got about two and a half mil of, of 45 degree seat on there, which is way too much. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set the one and a half mil three-phase cutter right to the outside edge of the valve. The inside of the cutter cuts down into this throat. Um, and then we're good. it's probably gonna leave about, I don't know, about a mil and a half diameter to come out of that throat. Um, because if you feel under there, there's a big sort of ridge under there um, that doesn't really need to be there. So we're going to take that out and then we're going to do the same on the inlets. And on these, you can normally take about two mil out of the throat of these, these inserts. And that's going to give them a bit more torque. So we're going to get that one set up and I'll show you how to do that. Really annoying about the pistons for the 4.2, but as soon as they're here, he can get that done, like I keep saying. Um, but he's got all these organized. The only thing he's got to do is clean this VR6 block up, give it a lick of paint and what have you, change core plugs, and um, the bottom ends are sort of, the blocks are ready to go, really. So just waiting for a few more bits. So really exciting that we, we've been able to crack on with this. V8, uh, we're waiting for the customer to come in and, um, and discuss sort of where we're going to go with this one but it's all pretty self-explanatory really if he wants us to do it. But um, yeah, he just wants to come in, have a chat about it. This Mini here, so the Mini Diesel, um, he's not gonna go ahead with that. They ring, rang us up yesterday. We did actually source a crank because this had done a main bearing. Um, we did actually source a crank, but we rang up yesterday saying, look, we scrapped the car, so just get rid of the engine. So we'll probably keep the cylinder head as a spare, but the rest of it's going in the skip. Um, but in the meantime, quickly, if any of you want this bottom end for any reason, just give us a shout, guys, and you can more than willingly have it if you want to get it picked up. I had a little mini yesterday. This is the nine. Uh, this is the nine fifty that I showed you a couple of videos ago that I was boring. This has gone out to plus thirty. Faced it. Finished honing it yesterday. I'm just letting it drain of oil. Going to get that outside today, give it a clean up. And um, we're not building this one. We're just doing a bit of machining for it. So we've had to source the pistons. We've got to do an unleaded on the head and, and what have you. We're going to supply him with a Newman cam, a bit of an uprated camshaft. It's going to have high comp pistons. So a little bit tasty for a 950. But um, yeah, that one's pretty much done. Coventry Climax block to do. So this is for Bob Dove. Um, what I normally do on this is... You see how many bolt holes you've got here for the head bolts. Um, I'm going to drill all these out and helicoil them all um, because the threads go pretty nasty on them. So um, we're going to get that up on the milling machine and I'll show you exactly what we have to do there. So what we've got here is the Climax block um, set up on the mill. So basically what we do is just set it up as square as we can going off the front edge here. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect because um, I clock each hole anyway, just to, just to be sure. I'm not gonna assume that all these holes are dead in line, although they should be, I never assume that. So what I normally do is, and a lot of you guys are probably gonna tell me this is wrong to do, but it's what I always do. Um, I use this here to center the hole um, visibly as best I can. Um, and then we know each hole, I zero our screen there, and then I know each hole is centered as good as it can be. Um, so what we've got is on the back edge here, we've got four holes where the thread is buried about sort of three inches, three and a half inches down into the block. So these are the hardest ones to do. And then you've got these, uh, these 14 on the top here, which are just below the surface. So what I'll do is I'll do the back ones first. So this one here, I normally insert this into the chuck. You engineers out there are 
almost certainly going to tell me this is a bad way of doing it. If I just spin it up, you can see that it's running true. So what we do is we wrapid the table up. I've roughly got it sort of central there. Wrapid it up to about there and we just lower the head until right central in the hole there. Then we zero, zero the screen, come back down. It takes a little bit longer, but I just like to do it. I just like to do it this way. Then you can assure that they're all as they should be, or as they were at least. I've done this on a lot of blocks. I do this on all the Cosworth blocks when I long stood them this way. Never had any issues. So whether it's the right way or the wrong way, it's the way I do it. So first of all, we've got the drill. Now down these holes somewhere, if I can get the torch, bit of a weak torch, but you can see the thread right down in the hole there. Probably about three inches buried. And you see the ones at the top. So that's what it looks like. So what, we've, what the idea is, we're gonna helicoil all these because the threads are a bit naff or not as you know not very good as standard the the materials a bit crap so bob just likes to helicall them all and make sure they're all good so what we're going to do is we're drilling out that existing thread with the helicall kit tap uh, sorry drill um, then we're going to tap it with the helicall tap then we're going to insert a helicoil and what we want to do is insert the helicoil down to very very slightly below that counterboard face down there um, and same in there so what you have to keep doing is is winding the insert down and then having a little look until you get just below the surface so here is the the helicoil kit so obviously you've got the drill there you've got the, the helicoil tap here and you've got the helicoils here we've got two different lengths we've got a longer length of a 20 mil length and then we've got a 15 mil length here um, so these shorter ones are the ones we're going to be using so what you do is you drill down then you tap down making sure that you blow out the um, the threads every time you do it get all the swarf out and then you've got a an insert tool here so what this does as you can see you've got a top which has got no tag and the bottom which has got a tag so to install this, what you do is you put it on the, the insert tool like that, making sure that that tag locates in the groove. And then when you wind that down, obviously that's winding down that tag at the bottom and pulling the helicoil into the thread. You've got to make sure, it's very important, when you start these helicoils, you've got to make sure that it's not cross-threading. Um, so you sort of get the feel of that. It should feel like a slight springy resistance as you're winding it in. Um, so once you've got to the point where it's at the correct depth, you're then going to have it like that with a tag at the bottom. Then what we use is something slightly smaller, um, slightly smaller than that, to just locate into there and tap it down, usually a magnet, and tap it down sharply and break that tag off the bottom. And it breaks off there where that little notch is. That's the idea of that notch, so you can break the tag off. And then you've got to be sure to get that tag out, whether you blow it out or get it out with a magnet. So now we've zeroed our machine, what I'll do, what I normally do is pull that down off the stop at the top, rapid the machine up, and you'll see this start to rise up as soon as we've bottomed out on the, on the thread there. So what we do, fire the machine up now, we're going to drill down to the base. The base of the block, you can, you can feel it going through the threads there. And there'll be some resistance. Like that, when you hit the base of the block, you can feel it cleaning up the base there. So that is all done. Rapid the machine back down. And then we're going to blow that swarf off. Let's just pop the um, pop the tap into the chuck. 
and I'm going to start this thread by hand with the tap. And what this will ensure is that that, that tap is, is true to the thread. So we've got a 90 degree both ways perfectly from the, bait, from the surface of the block. So what we do is no resistance, just wind it down by hand and you can see the handle going down. So it's starting to cut the thread. And once it starts, you go around sort of two or three turns of the chuck. If we undo the chuck, lift it up, wrap it down the machine. And now that's got sort of two or three threads of starting. You know that tap is perfectly um, square. So now we can put our tap wrench on and just continue cutting. This is a brand new tap, so this is cutting like butter, to be honest with you. You can look, you can do it with one hand. It's so, so easy to cut. Now you're probably wondering why I've, why I've got a, you know, normally with, um, with these taps, you get a starter tap, which has got a quite pronounced taper on the end of the tap. Then you've got a, a middle tap, which is not quite pronounced. And then you've got a bottoming tap, which has got no lead on it at all. What we're using is a second tap. And because the helicoils we are using are 15 mil, and this entire thread in this block here is probably, probably an inch. Uh, we don't actually need a bottoming tap, so it just cuts the process out. The heli coil is not going to go. It's not going to go as deep as the the lead on this middle middle tap. If I blow, up, blow this off, I'll show you. So, show you that there. Look, that's probably the depth of the thread we've gone. You've got a slight lead going from about two or three ending about two or three threads up and our helical is probably going to about there deep so we don't need to bother with a bottoming tap so now that's bottomed out if we blow this out which we nice clean get one of our helicoils put it on the locator and we'll And that is just below the surface down there. Bang that tag. And then when we blow, you should see the tag come out. There we go. He's out. Double check. And that is absolutely perfect, guys. All 18 are done now. You see the shallow ones are just below the, uh, the counter ball there, below the surface of the block. You've got the, the four deep down in the holes there, just below their step, another job done. So guys, really hope you've enjoyed today's video. Um, just a bit more of a techie one today, and I shall probably be doing more of those before Christmas. Comment down below, I'm sure you will, on whether you think it's right or wrong, the processes I've been doing, but it seems to work for us, like I say, whatever works. Um, but until then, thanks ever so much for watching. Like, subscribe, and we'll see you in another video. Cheers, guys.